we boarded the plane and the whole plane was full except for the seat beside me. And true to my natural introversion, I just kind of hoped it would stay that way. I just hoped that maybe I'd be able to spread out a little bit. But just as they were about to close the doors, one final person came running aboard and she plunked herself down beside me. And uh, she, she was a talker and that was great. I really enjoyed the flight actually from about an hour and a half on the plane together. And it was, it was fun. But uh, she was just coming back from a conference in Chicago and she was really excited about what she had learned there. She was a worship leader at her church. I guess her, her official title was creative arts director. And so her job was to put together their church's service each week. Early in the week, the pastor would come and say, here's our theme for the week. And it was her job to then construct a service around the theme. And so she told me about sourcing and building stage props, things like that, or going out to YouTube to find funny video clips that would supplement the message and uh, talked about building a dance team and, and told me that recently she had been exploring something called visual sermons, how sometimes the pastor would say, here's our theme for the week. And she would say, great, then actually, I don't want you to preach this week. Instead, we're going to do a visual sermon. We might have uh, somebody come up here and do a drama, or we might just have an artist come up on the stage and he'll paint a painting and that will be our sermon. It will be a visual sermon. And it was fascinating. I was just returning home from a, a conference about the church. I just learned about why we do what we do in church. We've been considering why we Protestant people have our services the way we do. And then she was telling me something that was completely different. I would sometimes interrupt her to ask, why do you do that? Why have you chosen to do things in that way? And it was clear that everything her church did in the service, they did because it worked or because they felt it worked. They had some effect they wanted to achieve in their services and then they would bring in elements that they, would, they believed would lead them to that effect. Are we going to preach this week? Well. If preaching brings about what we're looking for, then yes, we'll preach, but we might do a drama instead. Will we pray in church this week? Maybe, but just short prayers. We don't want long prayers. Will we read the Bible in church this week? Well, probably not, certainly not long passages because people tune out and we need to keep them engaged. We need to keep them entertained. Her presupposition, it became clear, was that if it works, it must be good. Whatever brings about the effect we're looking for, those must be good things. And so we'll do them until they stop working. Then we'll find other things to do. We know that, of course, is pragmatism. It's very, very common today. It's a tendency we find ourselves slipping into if we're not so, so careful. And as I was preparing to speak today, I just wondered, what would the reformers think of this? What would the reformers think of a church service that had no scripture reading? and no prayer, and no sermon? Would it even be recognizable as a church service? Would they even recognize this as God's people gathering to worship God in God's way? I don't think they would. So it's good for us to pause time to time and just ask, why do we do what we do on a Sunday morning? When we as Christians gather together to worship, why do we do these things? Why do we not do other things? Why do we preach? Why do we pray, even long prayers? Why do we read scripture, not just a verse at a time, but sometimes a whole chapter or more? Why do we sing? Are these all just traditions? Are they just habits? Are they just preferences? Or does the Bible tell us that as we gather to worship, these are the things we must do? If that, that woman I spoke to, if her presupposition was, if it works, it must be good. If it works, it must have hand, God's hand of blessing on it. One famous pastor has said, never criticize what God is blessing, right? Our presupposition and the presupposition of the reformers is if God says it, it must be good. If God says it, we will do it. If God says we must do these things, we'll do them whether they look attractive or not, whether they seem to bring about the effect that we want. If God says to do it, we will do it. 